Hello, my fellow investors. Before I start doing my analysis on Nathan's Famous, I just wanted to say that what I'm not interested in this company is as of now, January 2023. But this is definitely a company that's on my watch list, and it's definitely an interesting company that's worth watching. And maybe in 2024, 2025, this would be a very interesting investment. So let's get straight to it. What's Nathan's Famous? Why is this company so interesting? and why am I not interested in investing in it? So Nathan's Famous is a company, a very famous uh, company that has a very famous uh, hat dog brand. And you can see here they have franchise sales, restaurants, food service, retail, grocery, and hot dog eating contest. Now, what's their products? So they have here, the main product is hot dogs. Nathan's Famous premium 100% beef hot dogs. And just show you on, they have here another kind of beef ranks, buns, um, condiments and sauces, pickles. It just, they don't have a big amount of products, but they have their products are very famous and it's a very well recognized brand. They have appetizers, and another thing I want to point out is all their sausages are beef and not pork, which means they can also sell in Muslim countries that only that only pork. So that's another uh, part of the company. Now Nathan's famous. It has also a very famous hot dog contest. It's held once a year. You can see over here, they have Joey Chestnut is a, a Guinness World Record, I think, of most hot dogs eaten in a, in a 10 minutes or whatever it is. This contest is it has 10 to thousands of people coming to watch it and has millions of viewers on ESPN. So this is a very famous uh, branding for the company. Once a year, everyone uh, watches this uh, famous contest. So let's get to the company, what it does, and how it sells its products. We are a leading branded licensor, wholesaler, and retailer of products market under our Nathan's Famous brand, including our popular Nathan's World Famous Beef Hot Dog. What began as a nickel hot dog stand in Coney Island in 1916 has evolved into a highly recognized brand throughout the United States and the world. Our innovative business model seeks to maximize the points of distribution for and the consumption of Nathan's World Famous Beef Hot Dogs. Crinkle fried, crinkle cut french fries, and our other products across a wide range of grocery retailers and foods food service formats. Our products are currently marketed for sale in approximately 79,000 locations, including supermarkets, mass merchandisers, and club stores, selected food service locations in our company's owned and franchised restaurant throughout the United States and in 17 foreign countries. The company considers itself to be in the food service industry and has pursued co-branding initiatives within our food service environments. Our major channels of, distrib of distribution are as follows. Okay, so the basically it's three major um, uh, earnings that the company has. One, our licensing program contra contracts with certain, certain, certain third parties to manufacture, distribute, market, and sell a broad variety of Nathan's Famous br branded products, including our hot dog, sausages, and corned beef products, frozen crinkle cut french fries, and additional products throughout retail grocery channels and club stores throughout the United States. As of March 27, 2022, package Nathan's World Famous Beef hot dogs continue to be sold in supermarkets, mass merchandises, and club stores, including Walmart, Kroger, Ahold, Publix, Alberston, Safeway, ShopRite, Targets, Sam's Clubs, Costco, and BJ's Wholesale Clubs, located in all 50 states. We earn revenue through royalties on products sold by our licensees. So the first um, income is from royalties. So there's a third company, which is Joe Morell's, which produces for Nathan's its hot dogs, and Nathan's get a royalty on all the products that, that, that's being sold. So basically, the company doesn't have to do anything. It's just getting royalties on on their products that are being sold to other companies. The second um, income is the branded product, the branded branded product pro program. So this provides food service operations in a variety of venues. The opportunity to capitalize on Nathan's famous brand by marketing and selling 13 Nathan's famous hot dog products. We believe that the program has broad appeal to food service operators due to its flexibility to deliver our products to a wide variety of distribution channels. In conjunction with the program, operators are granted a limited use of Nathan's famous trademarks as well as Nathan's point of purchase materials. Unlike our licensing and, franch and franchise programs, we do not generate revenue from royalties, but rather by selling our hot dogs products either directly to food service operators or to various food service dist distributors who resell the products to food service operations. So these are the main two incomes the company has. One is the royalties that they're getting for the hot dogs, and the second one is the, is the hot dogs that they're producing and selling it to other uh, food services operators or 
whatever it is. That's the main two base uh, income that they have. Besides that, they have they have four company-owned re- restaurants and they have another few hundred uh, franchise restaurants. But the main income is from the royalties and from the licensing program, the br- the brand sorry the branded pro- uh, product program. Now I just want to show you another thing. Uh, through the branded product program, Nathan's provides qualified food service operations in a variety of venues. That, the opportunity to capitalize on Nathan's value brand by marketing and selling primarily Nathan's famous hot dog pro- products. So that's what we said over here. So let's just give you an example of what they sell. As of March 27, 2022, the branded product program distributes products in all 50 states. The, dist- the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, Canada, U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, Mexico, pursuant to the branded pr- product program, Nathan's world famous beef hot dogs are being offered in national restaurant chains, such as Aunt Annie's, Hot Dogs on a Stick, and Johnny Rockets, national movie theater chains such as Regal Entertainment, National Amusements and Cine- Cinemics in Mexico, amusement parks such as Six Flags and Universal Studios, casino hotels such as Foxwood, Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut, and convenience store chains such as Race Trace and Holiday Station stores. The branded product program also distributes products in professional sports arenas with National Nathan's world famous beef hot dogs being served in the stadiums and arenas that host the New York Yankees. New York Mets, the Brooklyn Nets, the New York Mets and the Brooklyn Nets, the Dallas Cowboys, Miami Marlins, Colorado Rockies, and Green Bay Packers. So, if you just do a uh, Google search for you know, the best, uh, most famous hot dog brands, basically Nathan's Famous will come up in every list you look for. The top, the first one, the top three, the top five, the top ten, whatever it is. So this is definitely in the United States one of the top branded hot dogs, and. Also around the world, it's one of the most famous. They have 27 franchise restaurants in Ukraine, which is closed right now because of the conflict in Ukraine and Russia. It, it, it's, it's a, it's a world-famous, 100-year-old um, uh, brand. So why is this company so interesting? What caught my eye is something absolutely amazing, and I'll show it to you right now. This is uh, Nathan's um, employees. I just wanted to show you the ratio, how much money they're earning per employee and how much money they're earning on the PPE. So before I just show you this, I just want to go back to the company. This is the last 10K. And as we can see, the sales. So over here, this is the main revenue, $77 million from sales, $31 million from licensed royalties, and the franchise fees from royalties from the restaurants is $3 million, and the total fund is nothing. So mainly the main income, which is almost $110 million, is from the sales and for the license royalties. The franchise from the from the restaurant is almost nothing. And again, cost of sales, so that's for the sales, $65 million. All the rest is mainly nothing. I'll soon make a, a calculate how much money the company is earning from the license and the sales without all the rest of the things. So what's so amazing about uh, Nathan's is this. They have 131 employees. Out of the 131 employees, 23 employees are in restaurants. So ma- basically the company for its main revenue, has only 108 employees. And the total PPE in the last 10K was $3.785 million. That's nothing. And the revenue, uh, this is the top line, not the bottom line, $140 million. If you want to calculate how much money each employee is earning, that come out to $876,000. And that's an amazing number. You have 131 employees, and you have generating, these 131 employees are generating $140 million. And if you want to check the PPE, $3 $3 million, $3.7 million PPE. Each dollar of PPE is, is generating $30,000 of revenue. This is an amazing number. And just to show you how unique and special this is, i going to compare it to a few other companies. So I took a few huge high-tech companies that is known to be a very asset light. Apple, Google, Microsoft, and Meta. Apple has 164,000 employees per the last 10 Ks. So... Some of these numbers are 2021, some of them 2022. It just I took the last 10K from each company. The, Apple has 164,000 employees. Their PPE is $42 billion, and the revenue is $394 billion. So per employee comes out that each employee is generating a revenue of $2,404. That's amazing. Uh, uh, sorry, millions. And But the, that's way more than, than Nathan's per employee. But the PPE, you can see it's each dollar of PPE is generating $9,000 in revenue. And that's only a third, less than a third of what Nathan's doing. Google, 156,000 employees, PPE of $84 billion, revenue $161 billion. Again, 
So their employee per revenue ratio is a little bit better than the Nathan's. But again, the PPE to revenue ratio, it's it's uh, it's way, way, way less. Yeah, This is 1.9 and this is 30. Microsoft, 221,000 employees, $74 billion in PPE, $198 billion in revenue. Again, so this number, the employee to revenue ratio, that's almost a little bit more than Athens. But again, look at the PPE to revenue ratio, 2.6, and this is 30. This is crazy. Uh, Meta, 71,000 employees, $57 billion in PPE, $117 in revenue, billion dollars in revenue, 1.6. This is double. The employee to revenue ratio is, is, is like double than the Nathan's. But again, the PPE to revenue ratio is 2, and this is 30. It's not, it's not even close. It's less than 10%. So these are um, high-tech companies which have a very high, uh, they're known to be very low on, very asset light. Now let's take a few consumer staples, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and Tyson Foods. Coca-Cola has 80,000 employees, $9.9 .9 billion in PPE, $38 billion in revenue. Their employee to revenue ratio, 481, that's half of, of Nathan's. The PPE to revenue ratio is 3.8 and that's just 30, it's almost 10% of what Nathan does. Pepsi. 309,000 employees, $22, in PPE, $22 billion in PPE, $79 billion in revenue. Again, 257, that's a third less, less than a third of, of Nathan's. Uh, 3.5, again, it's like almost 10%. Uh, Tyson Foods, 142,000 employees, $8.6 billion in PPE, $53 billion in revenue. Again, this is less than half of Nathan's. Six, that's way less than, than the Nathan's. Now, I took another three very successful restaurant chains. Texas Roadhouse, 73,000 employees, $1.1 billion in PPE, $3.4 billion in revenue. Again, 47 to 876. That's way, way less. 2.9 to 30. McDonald's, 200,000 employees, $24 billion in PPE, $23 billion in revenue, 116 to 876. 0.9 to 30. Um, Chipotle, also a very successful restaurant chain, 97,000 employees, $1.7 billion in PPE, $7.5 billion in revenue, so 77 to 876, that's way less, 4 to 30. Why is Nathan so um, asset light? How could it be? So the reason for that is, is very simple. Basically, Nathan is a brand that's just generating cash without doing anything. They have a very, very famous brand. They have a third company, which is Joe Morrell, which is producing their their hot dogs and they're basically getting royalties they don't really do anything they don't really have any plants they don't really have any factories no employees no nothing they just have a very very famous brand they're saying okay you could produce my brand sell it to whoever you want give me royalties or they're producing their own hot dogs and selling it out to other companies basically without any workers without any factories without any equipment with nothing just their brand alone is generating an amazing amount of money and this is why nathan's famous is such an interesting uh, investment uh, prospect this is very something very, very rare to have a consumer staple that just a brand alone is generating so much cash. So this is why Nathan's Famous is such an interesting uh, company that's definitely going to be on my watch list. So why, why don't I, uh, why am I not interested in investing in Nathan's Famous? So the reason for that is, let's just go back to the last 10K. The reason for that is, is there debt and sorry as we can see over here they have uh, current assets 50 million dollars in cash 30 million dollars in account receivables inventories nothing 522 they don't have, they don't need any inventories hardly so their total assets is 78 million dollars which is mainly cash a little bit of ppe operating lease assets okay it's almost nothing it's mainly 50 million dollars and 50 million dollars in cash and 30 million dollars in accounts receivable and here's a problem. Everything is nice and good until we see the debt. Long-term debt, $108 million. The total liability is $133 million, while the total asset is $78 million. That means the total debt, only the debt alone, is $108 million versus $78 million of assets. So this would be a classic example of what Ben Grant calls margin of safety. Maybe everything looks very nice. You have your company that's only their brand alone, without doing anything, is generating a huge amount of cash. They don't need to work. They don't need to exp uh, um, they don't need to invest in inventories. They don't need to invest in capital expenditures. They don't need to invest in property, plant equipment, and nothing. Basically, their brand alone is generating a huge amount of cash each year. But anything that goes wrong, and the company has no way to pay back its debt. 
So this is the main reason why I'm not interested as of now to invest in Nathan's famous. Now we have to ask ourselves a question, why is there so much debt? So let me just um, take you back over here. This is uh, Nathan's famous. I, I put in all the data since 2000. And let me show you something. So this is from 2009. You can see over here the debt. In 2000, I had $3 million of debt, 3.1.7, 1.2, 1, 8.6. In 2007, they had no debt. And they, even in 2008, they didn't pay even a penny of interest. Nothing. No interest expenses. And this is going on from 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2012. Everything was very nice. They didn't have any debt. And boom, 2015, $129 million of debt. What happened in 2015? So in 2015, the company over here, on March 10, 2015, we, consum we consummated $135 million offering of a 10% senior second secured note and paid a dividend of $25 per share or approximately $160 million in aggregate. This is something that got me totally um, fuzzed out. Why did the company take $135 million of debt, paying 10% interest a year, for the sole purpose of giving out almost everything in a dividend? And as you can see over here, this is Nathan's famous chart, 2015, $25, $25 dividend. Why? Why did they do it? You're taking on a huge amount of debt, more than an entire asset, and... Just for the sake of giving it a dividend. I don't know. I don't understand it. I don't know why they did it. I didn't dig deeper into why they did this. But this is something that definitely would raise my eyebrows. Why would the company take a huge amount of debt just for the purpose of giving it out a dividend? If they would have um, taken the money to start growing their restaurant chains, to growing their franchise business, whatever it is, I don't care, to do more products, whatever, I don't care. That's something I can understand. But to take on a huge amount of debt, more than your entire assets, just for the sake of a, giving out a dividend, I don't understand it. I could dig deeper to find out why it is, but as is that the company has more debt than the entire assets, I'm not going to invest in such a company. If the the the, the, the debt would go down or the money just generally would go up, then I'll try to figure out why did the management do this thing. But to be fair, um, I want to point out that although... Um, their total debt is more than the total assets. Um, we need to, we need to point out this this thing. Uh, this is the last 10k, and we can see over here goodwill and intangible assets. So over here they had the total assets of 78 million dollars, but in goodwill they have 95 thousand dollars and in intangible assets one one million dollars. That's nothing. But basically the company isn't um, writing on the 10k's how much their brand is worth, and the brand is worth a lot of money. How much is this brand worth? So I just made a simple calculation. I have no idea how to value uh, intangible assets like a brand. But I'm just throwing out a simple calculation. So this is the total sales only of the licensing program and from the royalties. The sales, $77 million, license royalties, $31 million. The total revenue, $109 million from these two things. Putting aside all the restaurant, anything else. $109 million they got from selling their products. The cost of, so, uh, of sales, $65 million. Depreciation, amortization, $1 million. SGNA, $30 million. Total expenses, $79 million. Net revenue, $29 million. So this is, if, we, if the company would have had only its brand, uh, selling its products and getting royalties on its products, without the restaurants, without the franchise, anything. Because besides all the other things they have, they have today also uh, what's called ghost uh, kitchens or virtual kitchens. They have a lot of other things. The brand alone is generating $29 million of net revenue before taxes and before interest because interest is something the company did. But this company um, could easily generate around $30 million a year just by its brand. And it's it's pretty uh, a general uh, number would be that a company, an asset that's generating 10% a year is, is a pretty good uh, investment. So to say that this that Nation's famous brand is worth around 30, 300 million dollars i think that's pretty a pretty fair assumption i don't know i don't know how much people are actually willing to pay for such a company but it's definitely worth somewhere in between 200 and 400 million dollars this is only the brand name alone so going back to the assets actually their assets are worth more than their liabilities but if the company gets into trouble and it can't pay its debt it doesn't help them to have a very uh, a very good asset they can't do anything with it they don't have any uh, any assets to sell they have only four restaurants they, they, it's not worth a lot of money 
if the company is not stopping to generate um, income for whatever reason it could whatever reason that can happen if the company stops generating income how are they going to pay back the debt they can't sell the brand they can't do anything they have no assets besides the cash so getting back to the point my first point why i'm not interested is because their total debt is way way higher than their than their assets now because this company is so interesting in that it's a brand that's generating money without doing anything, without employees, without factories, without anything, this is definitely a company I want to watch out for. Maybe in 2025, they know what to do in 2025. Maybe then the company will pay, pay back all its debt and it'll be an amazing investment. I don't know. I'm going to watch out for it. Maybe they paid back recently $40 million of the debt. Maybe another year, they'll pay back more debt and the company's be worth a lot more. Maybe they'll start doing the new initiatives, they start growing their franchise restaurants, or maybe going to buy more of their company-owned restaurants. The virtual kitchens maybe would be very successful. Whatever it is, uh, it's definitely a company that's generating a lot of money without any assets and without any um, employees is definitely an interesting uh, prospect to watch out for. So this is the first reason why I'm not interested in Nathan's as of now. Uh, the second reason is is that Nathan's belongs to a company called um, uh, Smithfield. Smithfield owns Nathan's Famous. And it owns also a few other companies. Uh, John Morrell is the company that manufactures Nathan's hot dogs. They also belong to Smithfield. And Th Smithfield belongs to a Chinese company. So over here we have, uh, this, I just want to show it to you. Smithfield falls under the parent ownership of a Chinese firm, WH Group. It was called, as it was called in 27, purchased Smithfield for $4.72 billion. So, so this is something that I, I could dig into it deeper and find out exactly what's going on. So you have a Chinese company, a holding company, WH Group, which is the owner of Smithfield, and Smithfield is is, a, is owner of, of Nathan's Famous. Now, maybe the reason why in 2015 they gave it a, a $25 uh, uh, dividend was something to do with the managers. Who made this decision? I have no idea. I don't know who's making the decision in the company. So that's an, another a very important thing to check out um, and to find out what's going on. Who made this crazy decision of giving it, of taking a hundred and thirty-five million dollar debt to give out a dividend? Is it something to do with Nathan's? Is it something to do with Smithfield? Is it something with WH Group? I don't know. I could dig into it deeper and try to find out what's going on. But if I wouldn't have the first problem, I'll do. I'll find out what's going on. I'll try to do research and find out what's going on. But as is right now, that the company has so much debt, I'm not uh, looking to dig into it deeper to find out who made this decision and who's making all the decisions in the company. So, but this is very definitely a very interesting uh, company that's uh, definitely on my watch list. I'm going to be looking out for it to see what's going on. Maybe in 2024, maybe 2025, it'll be a very interesting company. I just want to finish this off. Uh, Peter Lynch is, has characterized all investments into four categories. He has what's called turnarounds, the companies that have gone into problems and they're about to do a turnaround. And you can earn a lot of money if the company starts becoming uh, successful. The second one is... Yeah, cyclical companies, companies that have high and low cycles. If you buy it in the right time, you can earn a lot of money. The second, the third company is fast growers. You have like companies like Amazon, Google, whatever. Then you have what he calls slow growers. It's mainly it's mature companies that people aren't interested in them anymore because they're really old companies. They're not. They don't have any major growth, and they become very cheap. So if you have such a company and that's generating you 40, 50 percent a year and yielding that much amount of money, that could be an amazing investment. So I say Nathan's falls under the fourth category of a mature company, a slow grower, that people don't really don't have any interest in it. And maybe there'll be a time in the, in the future where this company could be an amazing investment. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button and to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.